Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Raul. This is DJ PJ. It's time. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's get into it. All right. So let's jump into it. What do you guys want to talk about? I mean, last time we left the people hanging on the Justin Roiland, so maybe we should just get into that first, knock that out one time, and then roll along, see where we go. Okay, so from what I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, Justin Roiland, an abuser. An abuser, yes. A domestic one abuser. Word. Just abuser. One use to describe him. <laughs> one word have to, to describe Justin Roiland, woman abuser. Beater. Woman beater. Oh, that's two words. Abuser. 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 Domestic violencer. Okay, I don't know. I'm just making oh. shit up. I don't know. It's it's I'm it's, it's it's it's, a, it's been a, an interesting day, right? And so, okay, so Royland abuser, what are they saying about this? So, are they going to recast them in Rick and Morty? I think they would have to. Yeah, at this point, they ordered like 80 episodes, and they only did like what one season since the big purchase. Fudge. So yeah, That's a lot. They, uh, you got to keep that's the, too much money in the machine at that point. Exactly. The show must go on. The ball must keep rolling. All these things. You have animators, you have writers, all kinds of people with jobs. That, yeah, they have to keep it. So who would you want them to cast with? Someone equally as absurd, I feel. I feel like you kind of have to, like the casting has to be so bold where it doesn't even sound like Justin Rowland or anyone trying to imitate the character. I, I would kind of go the other way. Like the the name isn't important. Justin Roiland was never a name. He wasn't Will Smith or anything. Uh -huh. He just had a relation with Dan Harmon and he had a voice that sounded good. Rick, Marty, oh, Rick, oh. And that worked well enough for the fans. And there's people on TikTok and all over the internet who do dead on impersonations. Okay. So I think you hold just you know, a Rick and Morty impersonation casting call and you hire the guy who does the best job. I think they already have it right here. I nominate Diesel Time. Diesel Time. I, I don't think I did a good job. Diesel Time. P PJ. Oh no, bring up me PJ. He's doing a really bad job. Let me tell oh, you. Boy, you sound like boy. Mickey Mouse and like- Oh boy. I'm so you sound like, like Mickey, Mickey Mouse, Mouse and like uh, <laughs> Edgar from, from uh, Men in Black. <laughs> You know, like, that's my Edgar skin. This is diesel time. Oh, I need boy. water with sugar. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm going to need an Edgar haircut. Come on, an Edgar boy. suit. He was wearing an Edgar suit. This is a uh, terrible Rick impersonation. I think we should move on. <laughs> hey, that's a that's kind of a, you know, men in black. Will Smith. Mad love to Will Smith. Yeah, he's got to be a running theme of the <laughs> he's podcast. The, he's Him always the, Chris Rock. He's the undercurrent. Will Smith and Chris Rock. It's just... I feel like it's the conflict of our times. Anyways, we must return back. Okay, no, so no, I think we should talk about Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> we should continue talking about, about Will, Will Smith. Smith. Like just like three years later, just like, what about Will Smith, huh? How can we further analyze <laughs> the slap? Yeah. Can the we look at the body language, the, world. the angle, the, the approach? Angles. You know, can we study our, for our own? Because we want to start a slap tournament of our own this eventually. Is true. Yes, this is true. So actually, we're going to have to get... I don't know about you all, but I have been practicing. <sighs> oh, all right. So, yeah. If we're you're practicing... acting. We're thespians now. <laughs> Did you see that? We're going to have to I do mean, a... I mean, we need to work on that. We're going to have to get Jackie Chan's uh, stunt team to help us out with that. That should be cool. Shout out to Jackie Chan. Mad love to you. Hope he's watching. Or maybe this could be like a video idea, like a play-by-play -play breakdown of the slap. Like as he walks forward, he's got his, you know, shoulders going. And then as he pivots the hip, as he, you know, just break it down slow motion, like on the ESPN with the markers. Yeah, I like, think there's something here. You know how we should break it down? Do you guys remember those Japanese shows where like they have someone dressed in black, like in a black suit and like, Someone's like acting like, you know, martial arts or whatever. And they're like doing like someone's like pretending to be the legs or whatever. And they like, you, you know what I'm talking about? No, oh. I, I'm familiar enough with Japanese television that where I can like, kind it's of like, imagine. It's like a weird, like real but. life puppetry where it's like someone's like, whatever. We'll, we'll eventually have puppetry. to puppetry. There we go. Yeah. A puppet reenactment of the Will Smith. We could re just reenact everything with puppets. Oh yeah, we could like set up the runway. And we could like, have, that could be the different channel, like the, like the. For the only puppetry. content. I did take a Muppet Magic class in college, so yeah. I'm kind of an expert. 
Definitely. We'll, we'll have a little cricket here and then, you know. Yeah, yeah. We and then maybe finally this whole time can be a real boy. A real boy. I'm a real boy. Your Mickey Mouse impression <laughs> is endlessly Smash useful. Them. You know, you also, also kind of sounded. Pinocchio. You also kind of sounded. Your Rick also kind of sounded like uh, the Doc from uh, Back to the Future, I would which hope is so. very <laughs> close to Rick and Morty. It's I mean, obviously, it was influenced, right? I, I I don't know. I don't see any similarities. <laughs> Not at all, right? Nothing about time okay, okay. travel. Nothing about time travel. Nothing. Okay. Fair so, enough. No, I don't know where you would get that. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, how do you think fans like? Or do you think they'll be like, okay, whatever, we don't care. Um, I don't really read every variety magazine, just give me more Rick and Morty. Or do they will be like, no, we don't like this new guy. We want all or nothing Justin Roiland. Or I don't know, what do you think the reception will be to recasting in the I, I almost feel like people were Roiland out. Like Justin Roiland had so many voices in so many different shows where he did every single voice that it was almost, at least to me, sometimes it was almost kind of like, oh, it's Justin Roiland again. Mm. Like there, and, and it wasn't like, it was like a complete variety of voices. It was all essentially the same voice, just different, like. Okay. So like he has his Rick like, voice, his Morty voice, and then the. But they're kind of like, they're kind of the same the voice. The family tree underneath it. Yeah. You know, they're kind of the same. Like you saw that show Solar Opposites on Hulu, which mm -hmm. uh, they should sponsor us. Solar Opposites on Hulu. Brought to you by. <laughs> or Hulu. <laughs> or Hulu, just in general. You know, just throwing out there. Anyways. But yeah, like, it was the same voices. Essentially. I mean, because it's the same guy, right? Yeah. The video game, the Xbox video the, game, the video with game. The, the gun talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? I forgot, I'm the, the, name I forgot the, the name as yeah. well. But I know what you're referring to. Yeah. He designed it or like he wrote it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it all had his voices from what I can gather. Like maybe... The Royland verse is just. At it, an end. It, it just yeah maybe it folded. Maybe it just flew like it it imploded like a supernova just really quickly you know. Comma just card up to him. Yeah. I mean think about it stars you know they burn sometimes they last a long time mm -hmm. sometimes they burn super bright and people you know move on so it could be this just like he happened to get in trouble with the the criminal side and then at the same time overexposure on the Hollywood side. So yeah, maybe Rick and Morty is more popular than the actor doing the voices. Well, I, at least that's the, I would think that the writers and the producers of the show hope that, right? Like- You gotta put the house on it, otherwise- Yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah. else like if you don't commit to the either the absurdity or like the, com like the complete revamping of it, then mm -hmm. you're not gonna get anywhere. It like almost comes down to the writers. Right, right, like right. If like, you could swap the voice one for one and, you know, just cross your fingers, but the writers, they give fans something to be like, oh, I like that. Right, right. Then, yeah. Right. We'll Man, see. what a trip. What I a feel trip. like it has, there's must be a precedent out there, right? Like, they, I think some, maybe this is the fuel that the writers need to go into a new direction. For oh yeah, oh. the flame, because popularity brings comfortability. So, you know, you put their backs against the wall and they come out with, you know, the hottest episodes. Yeah, but you maybe. Know what? You know what? They could, because the show is so meta, right? And we're talking about like infinite ricks in infinite universes. Who's to say that there's not a, who's to say that at some point the Rick and Morty that we know don't get a different voice because of some infinite possibility, infinite crazy situation that they got themselves into, you know, like there's a whole universe of Rick's with a new voice. There's yeah, there's a whole universe of Rick's with like a different voice, each of them. So oh, what if every episode had a new Rick and Morty voice actor? Right. That'd be great. Well, kind of like when they did that movie with the. Uh, it was like the biopic of uh, like Bob, Bob Dylan, Dylan, yeah. The where they had actors. like they even had like the different actors and stuff. Yeah. But I don't know. That's that's kind of crazy. Well, I guess jumping into different things, Ant Man. I know you said you watched Ant Man. Tell us your thoughts on it. Yeah, exactly. From they versus... all die at the end. <laughs> Damn. Kidding. No spoiler. 
free as much as possible, right? But um, I just want to say that uh, my ears were burning. Uh, the Council of Ricks, you know, we were uh -huh, talking about uh -huh. that. Council Rick and Morty. Yeah, yeah. You can. I. I'm not too sure on this. Maybe you know. Maybe maybe or. or Somebody out there knows more, but um, the writers, right? Are there any writers that are, that also wrote? Um, I think there is Ant overlap. Man? There's, I think there's overlap in some of the writers that wrote for um, Loki, hmm. which is closely tied, obviously, to Quantum Mania because of Kang and all that. And Loki was a pretty like time travelly show, heavily leaning on like multiverse. All that stuff. The variants. Yeah. Exactly. So I think it's uh, the, the variants is a key word too. Mm. You know, uh, I'm just going to put it out there. I don't know how much you guys want me to. Well, how, um, did you enjoy the movie? I Give did. I did. You know, I was expecting uh, more connectedness than I think I in the last shows I was talking about. I want to see more connections. Find it like with my eyes. I want to see more connections happen. Like in within the characters, within in the MCU. all the other uh, characters in the MCU that we saw in Phase Four, uh -huh. where this kicks off Phase Five, right? And I just want to say I, I I could have, I think there should have been more connections, you know, with Shang Chi maybe or with the Marvels, this Marvel. I think I was still left like, oh, okay, um, what about this? What about that? You heard it here, everyone. He hates it. <laughs> One but, of the, oh. but I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not just I mean, those rotten tomatoes. I don't know if you are a fan of, of that. Right. But I'm on the audience side of things, though. I still with the that, audience like with it. that said, I'm still on the audience side of things I'm up there with the 84 percent. I think that the audience uh, rotten tomato score. But you were left with a little bit of connection. Blue balls. Ex if yeah. Know. Yeah. If to put it the least. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. To, to in the most crass way <laughs> you were. In the most bubble also way, yes. In the most bubble also way, you're... Some blue bubble also. Some yes, blue yeah. bubble also, yeah. Blue ball bosses. No? Okay. Mm. I thought I ate. I thought I ate with that joke. <laughs> but I left the whole fucking plate. So one of the things that I had heard was that it's less of an Ant-Man movie and more of a introduction of Kang leading into Kang Dynasty Secret Wars material. Mm. So I'm surprised to hear you say that it lacked the connectivity when one of the criticisms was it lacked an Ant-Man identity and the identity of the movie lied in pitching uh, a Kang future. I think I'm just nitpicking those two specific, the Shang-Chi and the Miss Marvel. That, those two parts for me, I, I felt that I was expecting it to tie more. But... Um, I mean, with that said, I think this the admin quantum mania was what what Thor Ragnarok was for Thor in itself. It came from two, I don't know, uh, one was introduction to the character, and then uh, movie number two was kind of on the dark side, um, not really feeling the character development. It was just it seemed kind of rushed. But Thor Ragnarok just went into Opened a new up, yeah. direction, right, in in a more comedic uh, way. Uh, Taika Waititi. Uh, I think after that he became he he got involved with more more projects. Same similar style, comedic, upbeat. Um, so I think I'm in Quantum Mania. It's not like the first two, it's not like the the first or the second. It's what it's kind of like a Thor Ragnarok. Okay. Direction. I'm getting the vibe. So I don't know if you guys know this, but so when Ant Man was originally coming out, the first Ant Man. The person that was slated to direct was uh, the guy Edgar who Wright. did, yeah, obviously, uh, Baby Driver and Scott Pilgrim, excellent films, excellent pacing, kind of just a different style for the MCU at the time would have been, and then like halfway through the halfway through production they like kicked him out and like revamped the whole movie, and in a more like I guess Disney friendly like direction, right? The Marvel formula, yeah, right. they applied it, yeah, which is crazy because I feel like the vibe that I'm getting from like the things I've been reading and what you're saying is that, and what you were saying that were like, people feel like there lacks an identity. Like it's almost like the Marvel formula is starting to get a little stale for audiences and people want to see creativity again. And people want to see, uh, like brand new voices come out and having the freedom to actually, uh, explore that, you know, explore, you know, and, and it's almost like you're starting to see like, how big of a missing piece Edgar Wright 
is in that particular Ant-Man franchise. Yeah, because he would have put together a concise story. He storyboards better than any dark director in Hollywood, if you ask me. Um, I, I I feel that 100%. Like, the expectation going into the theater, knowing that there is such thing as a Marvel formula, and to be able to see it play out in front of you and to know what's happening as it's happening right yeah, yeah like you're aware of the walls you can reach out and damn near touch them and someone like edgar wright can make a movie that will play by the rules if you let him and make it also feel authentic Fresh, new, and authentic and like an auteur and... yeah piece like a baby driver right and sincere. or scott pilgrim, scott pilgrim is dude great scott comic pilgrim. book movie right and scott pilgrim was a, a a book that had a cult following and people were very protective of that as fans, right? And yet, when he did this film, it felt comic booky, and at the same time, it was fresh and it was new. I know that sounds weird to say. It feels like an old thing to say. It felt fresh and new. It's rock and roll. It's but it was, rock. but it, it was what it was, you know. Like, and so I don't know. It's just kind of interesting. Like, to to me, like it just seems like there needs they need to breathe fresh air into the MCU in that way with like director voices and things like that you know like because it's they're losing identities for each individual superhero right i think they should bring in the the, the writers and the po- the people behind the 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 last of us okay yeah i think what what mm. they're doing uh what they did with adapting it from the video game and if you've watched it I think it's it's not only is it I want to say faithful. It's not one hundred percent faithful. It's not a one. But it, it's faithful, but at the same time, it allows for room for creativity to uh, be creative in that universe that, right. that 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 was created, that was adapted, but it all works. I'm a happy camper, dude. It's such a good show. It's such an. I mean, I have I haven't seen the latest episode, but from what I've watched, it's just. It's it's crazy because it's like, and and I remember playing the game like briefly, but even then like I know that they expanded on like the whole uh, thing with what was his name was it Frank Bill and Frank Bill and Frank they expanded on all that, and that was a beautiful episode regardless of what you think you know like regardless of what you think about the lifestyle or whatever, but. And maybe not even lifestyle. You know what I mean. Uh, but like, if you're homophobic, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if, regardless of whether you're homophobic or not, like uh, the reality is that it was a beautiful episode. You know, like it and, could be its own standalone, right? Just that it could have been a movie. They that's told, what makes it so beautiful. They told so much in such a limited time. I think that's the thing that was impressive. Just like it felt like you watched like a two-hour movie. And they told the story beautifully. You didn't feel like you were missing anything. And it was still like a 40 minute episode, like an hour long. Yeah, it was short. Yeah. It was one of the shorter episodes. So I haven't played the game at all. Yeah, and, same. Um, I have no point of reference, like you're saying it's close to, but you know, not exactly. I haven't heard any fans say it's not faithful enough to the material. So we'll give them, you know, that star for being true. And based on what I'm getting, super impressed and that Bill and Frank episode is the type of thing you would leave for maybe episode seven or eight in the season. And I like a filler episode. Yeah, exactly. Up. And I give them all the credit for no episode three. We're going to give you guys our Emmy contender and right out the gate. You know, she's mentioned like, so is are Bill and Frank friendly? Well, Bill is, but not Frank or Frank, but not Bill. I don't remember. Um, and then right then and there, I'm like, all right, I don't know these characters. I haven't played the video game, but they kind of planted the ice, the seed of their identities. So right. when he shows up and he's in the hole and you're what's your name? I'm Frank. Oh, well, yeah. I'm Bill. I'm like, oh, that's what like, so oh. when he's playing the piano, I'm like, oh, they're gay. Yeah. So when it's they, like a second. It's a second thing. It's not the main thing. But it's no, like but a, what I'm saying for me, it kind of unfolded. It like, yeah, the, I, the light bulb went off like a minute before they kiss. Well, the thing that's beautiful about it, and I'm I'm sure as a filmmaker, you will agree, and, and you please jump in, um, that a lot of times writing or filmmaking fails at actually showing the story as opposed to, you know, a lot of times people get caught up in like 
literally having the characters provide exposition yeah like verbally like oh we're gonna do this and like oh the you know blah 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 and a lot of films get stuck in that when they should be showing they should be using their medium to show and demonstrate like avatar you have that one character who's like i'm here to tell you how your body works yeah yeah (laughs) you know like how do you how do you feel about that in regards to films and movies that like it, is that really like the powerful piece you think that one of the things that makes the show so much different and so much so effective? No, I, I think so too. I think it, it, with, with all of what you guys said, I think what also makes it so beautiful and, and so is that it, 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 it appeals to universal themes, right? Um, but mm-hmm. it's with, within the story itself, the larger story, it's connected. Right. So I think going back to what we were talking about, uh, like Atman and like the Marvel MCU formula. Right. I think they can they can take a couple notes from yeah. how mm-hmm. they they're able to tell one story within a, a larger story and still connect it. Like they give you the pieces and it's all subtext. Like I said, how I was able to guess that they were going to be gay and have a 20 year relationship just off of her asking the question, mm-hmm. what's Bill and Frank like? So as soon as I learn their names, I already know that they're gonna be around, you know, or each other within 20 years from now. And so, yeah, it didn't say, hi, I'm Bill and I'm gay. Oh, I'm Frank and I'm gay too. Like you kind of figure it out as they figure out that they, you know, both f- feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it gives the audience the credit to watch and kind of play along, if you will. Yeah, I mean that that definitely felt the, the documentary style, yeah. right? Yeah. You're letting it unfold before you, and you right, know, without being so like, oh yeah, we're gay. No, like you you let it unfold before the camera. But what was very interesting too uh, within that episode is that in order to tell this story of of a gay couple, and then the, and how beautiful this story is, you have to remove society around them yeah. in order to tell this story. Yeah, the two of them like, by themselves. Yeah, 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 it's right. like this That's beautiful it, romance. You have to isolate it enough to be able to just hone in on the human relationship exactly. as opposed to as opposed to having it be framed in the context of their They're homosexuality gay, isn't, yeah. as opposed to the actual just the love you can look at yeah, each other. You have to the the let, the monsters, right? Like, who are these right. monsters? Because, like, for example, you look at Society. like a movie like Break. Uh, what was it? I was gonna say, uh, is it Breakback Mountain? Broke back. Broke back. Sorry. Um, and that whole movie, even though it was a love story, it was still written in With- the context of the constraints of their gay relationship within the context of uh, uh, society and like society's misogyny within that time period, right? And so I, that point you made, dude. Yeah, what well, you were saying about mind, universal bro. themes, like the, the two daughters, the one that dies and the one that replaces and like the, the one that would have never, you know, been for that, Armageddon world and the one who fits right in, but is kind of like a sociopath. Like you, you know, you don't have to raise a sociopathic daughter to be, you know, understand like he's dealing with the trauma of losing a daughter and like having to take on another one. Uh, So yeah, like the romantic partnership of Bill becoming a softer person to, you know, have someone to protect and Frank, you know, maybe toughening up a little bit and, uh, dealing with this, you know, survivalist and having a say and not being a pushover, like they both kind of evolve to fill in where each other miss out, just like any couple might. Right. So by the time you get to the last day when he says, I've decided, and, you know, the the softer of the two is saying, no, I'm making the decision today, you know, we're doing what I want to do. And we're gonna, you know, do something nice. (laughs) And, you know, we're gonna get married, we're gonna put on nice suits and we're gonna have a meal and then we're gonna say goodbye. I cried like a freaking baby. Like, it wasn't like I let it out. No, I just continuously cried from the moment he said, this is the last day until they sat down for the meal and started doing dialogue again. Like, 
I just sat there completely memorized and that's what a, a good movie should do. And even though like the, the male kissing did make me feel a little uncomfortable to watch because that, you know, they're zoomed in right in front of, you know, because it's intimate. It's supposed exactly. to be intimate, yeah. right? It's very it's intimate. Yeah. So I can get past the little feeling of uncomfortableness of watching it and then move on to just like going full in on accepting their love for each other. And, you know, it doesn't have to be your thing, you know? Right, right, right. And, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because I hadn't thought about it. But when when Frank takes control of his own, I guess, like destiny, right? It reminded me a lot of that position that, or not position, but that situation where they initially met, uh, when they had that dinner with uh, Joel and... Mm -hmm. Uh, I forgot her name. Tess. Tess. Where, where Frank didn't want to have that, but that time that we see Frank be really firm and really like demanding, like, no. We're having we're company and we're going to be polite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was kind of like that. So it was just kind of like that evolution of that that dynamic. And then at the end of the day, seeing um, seeing Bill just kind of like, and both of them knowing that both of them are going to make that decision at the end of the day, you know, like, because even Frank was like, there's, you know, spoilers, but like, you know, there's, there's the, the pills are in the drink, right? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Like, it, and it, uh, yeah, when he chugs the wine, and you can like, already uh, tell, like, uh, and you knew, yeah. and you knew Bill wasn't gonna, like, yeah. abandon. His mission had become to protect yeah. this, you know, softer man and to fall in love. And right. without him, you know, what's he gonna do? Just be a bitter piece of shit again? No. Right. So, yeah. Uh, Definitely out of what we gave it, how many babosos? Three, 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 three out of three babosos. Three out of three babosos. All banana slugs, all at least a foot long. Right? Because banana slugs are pretty oh, long. Oh, I thought you meant Bill and Frank were packing. I mean, they could be. They got they, banana they slugs. <laughs> they the banana reason why they didn't show us what happened inside the room. That's why I'm going to start measuring, like, like you know. Uh, how many banana slugs is your how Johnson? Many it's about one. All stupid. One baby banana slug. Oh. Uh, uh, Go eat a bag of no baby things. banana slugs. <laughs> exactly. I was looking at that one too. Yeah. How many? Of, how many of those bad boys? One, two, three. But you know what's interesting about The Last of Us as well? The relationship that that uh, Joel and uh, Ellie Ellie have as well they're at the actors right mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting to see you know it, it got me like this is i know this might be like a crazy jump because like i've seen interviews between them and they seem so like you can see the respect that each of them have for each other and um they're you know like the respect as an adult that uh pedro pascal has for i forgot her name the actress's name ellie you know, and it's it, and it's like you can tell that he even with the the actress that played his daughter, you can tell that they that he kind of takes them under their wing. They post pictures of them all going out to lunch and just kind of having like a very mentor she mentorship like relationship, you know. And it got me thinking. I'm like, dude, it's kind of crazy that this Hollywood guy can have really positive relationships with his fellow coworkers who are young, obviously younger than him, 19 years old, whatever. And then on the other hand, you find out that. Freaking Leonardo DiCaprio's dating a 19 year old again? Like, come on, bro. Like, hey, man. It, like, I, I, like, I get that. You know, sometimes you might be attractive to 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 women that are younger than you. You know, but like, like, consistently, constantly be attracted to like 18 year old women and 19 year old women and all that stuff. Like, you don't on, think bro. maybe Pedro Pascal was taking him out to lunch uh, for other reasons? You think he's smashing? I mean, if it's legal, I, I mean, I wouldn't take it off the table. No, I'm just playing. But uh, no, I, I think you hear about actors talking about their experiences on set and you know, you bring a piece of yourself to the character mm -hmm. and then you leave the set having experienced those things. Even if you're just pretending, you're still going through the motion. So I could see, you know, if you're playing father and daughter with these two actresses, that you're kind of naturally fall into into that rhythm. Yeah, you're exactly. Not, you're not you're not looking at them the same. You're literally looking at them as your daughter a tiny bit. 
right. because you've experienced that, you've lived it, versus Leonardo DiCaprio is just trapped in a loop. I mean, yeah. the guy doesn't age, so Unless you can't really blame him. But a really great method actor. Yeah, yeah I guess. <laughs> you know? Emotionally speaking, he's uh, just he forever wishes he 21. could travel back in time. Like I don't think he needs to. Look at the guy. Like he looks the, the same as he did when he made uh, Catch Me If You Can. That's what he don't tells all the ladies. That's Catch me if you can. Psych, you're out. You're too old. Get you're back too old, in line. Girl. What are you, 27? Gross. Like uh, Paul Rudd, right? Paul Rudd. Now look at us. It's 2099. Yeah, but is Paul Rudd dating? No, Paul no, Rudd's no, dating a woman about, his like, age. Like Keanu Reeves. I'm like going to say something like controversial. Us. I think like us. It's stem cells, bro. Oh, baby stem blood. Cells. Baby blood. For sure. What's it called? Uh, we're gonna give Alex Baboso Jones a run blood. for it. Baboso blood. Baboso we better watch Baboso out. Baboso slime. <laughs> oh, don't do that, dude. I'm like right in front of you. You're just like. And he does it again. Yeah, and he does it again. It's like, I'm like, too. Ladies, I'll <laughs> zoom in. Cameraman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey. But, you know, that got me thinking about the flash. And another guy. The Flesh? The Flash. Oh. Uh, the Flesh is the, like the, the flesh triple X the version. Flesh. The Flesh is Flesh. The Flesh is the triple X version. But um, what's the actor's name from The Flash? Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller. That son of a gun. Who we have to refer to as they. We forgot. Ezra Miller, they son of a gun. They are a son of a gun. A uh, son or they that are son of they, a gun. they are well. I mean, son of a gun is look just at a that phrase. Son of a gun over there. That look they, at that. They of gun. They of what? No. Well, son of gun. So anyway, hey, they, they still is gonna smash, dude. They're gonna smash the. So record. here's the thing I don't get. Ezra Miller keeps his role. Yes. Roylan out. Yes. I, I mean, I'm not. Who, I'm not who's I'm worse? First of, first of all, first of all, first of all, I'm not. Defending Royland. Well, Warner Brothers. I need to be very clear. It's both Warner Brothers. I need to be very clear. I am not defending Royland. It's just curious and peculiar to me to see that Royland hit one woman. Domestic abuser. One woman. One woman. One woman. Completely out. And granted, I, I think there was already a rift between Harmon and Royland, right? Ezra Miller hit Ezra at least Miller, one woman that we know of. At least one woman. We had the baby with the no, bullet in the mouth. they hit at least one they woman. They hit at least, at least one, one woman. woman. They had a baby on their farm in Vermont with a bullet in its mouth. They they, they also harassed and beat up like uh, like a dude, like a postal worker or something. Or, or like a, there was like videos all over the internet. Video about in the uh, outside the bar where he strangles yeah. the girl. Um, and steal stuff. He stole the liquor. Ezra Miller, he a menace a to society. He was groom, grooming a teenage uh, girl. Ezra Miller is like the real life yellow flash. Or what's the anti yeah, reverse, reverse, reverse flash? flash. Reverse flash. <laughs> Ezra, <Eopardon. laughs> Ezra Miller is the real life reverse flash. I think he plays reverse flash in the movie. Like in the trailer when they like put their two feet together, you can see one of them has like a different color scheme. One, it's like black and right, yellow, I think. freeze frame it and... If you analyze each frame... Because there's two of them. Imagine there's two Ezra Millers. Oh, in real life, right? <gasps> oh, but hey, Ezra Miller versus Roiland. Two of them I come to set. <laughs> on the sla it. In the they slap made it, off. They made it. They made it to the Tres Baboso Slap. The three, they're in the bracket. Earth A, they're Ezra Miller, it. and they're Earth B, They're in, Ezra in the bracket. You heard it here. You heard it here. Ezra Miller, Roiland, who... Can beat up. No, I each think other. Ezra Miller versus Ezra Miller. Like Earth Ooh. A and Earth B, the two in the movie, okay. slapping each other. So that means there's a Royland. Which one? You have to, the dominance, like a poltergeist. It's there like can only uh, be one. Jet Li. Exactly, the one. Well, what Slap each other until. Poltergeist is a horror movie. What was it? Oh, no, uh, High, Highlander. Highlander. But then there was uh, that Jelly movie, The One. Yeah. Either one of these movies, neat, it sums up the plot of Ezra Miller battling for the dominance of Ezra Millerdom. Ezra Miller, though. What? A, hey, but the but in the Flash, though. That trailer, though. Batman. The most of the most watched Batman. trailer views ever. Michael Keaton. Yeah. I'm Batman. Yeah. I'm Batman, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's like this, like almost like uh, Adam like, West. Like, yeah. oh, I'm Batman. Yeah, no. I'm Batman. Uh, I'm still Batman. Yeah. I'm Batman. Like, I'm Batman? I'm Batman. 
Yeah. He was like a comedian. Okay. I was watching like videos of like how people were like, Michael Keaton, he's too short. Or like Mr. They, Mom. they really want they really wanted Arnold Schwarzenegger to be like uh I'm gonna, Batman! You criminal there! <laughs> I am going to arrest you! Slow oh, down! That, that's crazy, the flash, man. But we at the end of the day we're gonna watch it. Oh, f- oh absolutely. that trailer. Oh my god. It was pretty good, dude. Pretty, pretty good. It, it's just the best it did, thing to come although out. Although it did although uh, I feel like it felt kind of like a UPN movie. Channel 13, UPN. What? A UPN movie? <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing it back. UPN, everyone. Channel 13. Explain yourself. For those it's, of you that are living in 2099 and doesn't know do what not UPN know. 13. UPN 13. I'm going to bring it back. UPN 13 was, a, was yeah. UPN was like the American Telefutura. It was kind of like... You know, like kind of. It was a little cheap. It was a little cheap. It was a little like. This looks fancy to me. I don't know, dude. It those cameras, like, the no, close up on no, the Batman you know what it is? suit. It's because <laughs> it's because like UPN and like what is it? UPN used to have the Marvel shows or the DC shows like uh, Smallville and all that, right? Yeah, like Green Arrow and shit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Like all those, all those shows, they were all kind of like cheap. Yeah, but this and movie doesn't And the Flash reminds me of... I mean, there was a Flash show, right? Yeah. And there still is. I think their last season... With very cheap CGI. I, I, I'm just I, saying. I will die on this hill. The, the Flash well, movie mean, does not, not look I'm cheap. I'm not talking... Uh, like, uh, look, I'll still watch it. It looks like a Zack Snyder me, movie. It, to me, it kind of gave me UPN vibes. I like the cinematography. A lot of the shots are like swooping. Uh, I, 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 I I disagree. I'll just say that. It's only one way to settle this. Slap, Slap league. Slap league. <laughs> Sorry. I just We need like a like electric guitar like <laughs> Slap. Just slapping each other. <laughs> Slap league. Hey, what what do you feel right now just for the camera? You want you want to take a slap? I'll take one. No, I'm not going to take a slap. Ah, bro. you pussy. Come on. I'm not going to take a slap. All right. You you want to slap me? No. Ah. I have no real anger right now. Fair enough. Next time, when I'm angry, I'll try and channel it right now. Oh, we'll actually channel. slap each other? Like, I mean, maybe ah, we, can, we, we can go like half, that's, like 50%. That's what I'm saying, like like, that's what I'm saying for the, just for the camera, like a little, a little. No? All right, fuck it. All right, let's, you, Let me take I'll go my, first. Okay, you slap me first. Oh, okay. I'm gonna take off my headphones. All right, folks. For the ground. You gotta put it near the, so we can hear it. So which side are you gonna slap? Oh, wait, hold on. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I lost stupid. Just, where's that big Russian guy to hold me? All right, my turn. Okay. All right. Well, stand this way. Stand. <laughs> Sorry. Harder. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> you say it first, bro. You said it. Okay, now both of you. Okay, now both of you. Okay, you one cheek each. All right, now, 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 we can see, now with our tongues. Now the Kiss League. Yeah, now we can. It's February. Love is in the The Kiss League. It, I mean, that's the that's the ultimate goal. Just like we go slap league, maybe like kick in the shins league, oh. and then and then eventually oh, it'll, be like a, it'll be like a it'll be like a ball like a punch? kiss league. Like who kisses nicer? And that's Valentine's, it's like, it's Valentine's like a, Day. It's like a nineties. It's like an eighties like teen romp. Like Porky's or Revenge of the Nerds, where they never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I thought I ate, but no. I throw it on top of the bottle. All the whole other plate. ideas we have. I thought I ate, but I left the slap whole off the plate. Comic Con convention. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, record that. The Bobosos Plus Network. We <laughs> just throw it on the pile. Yeah, yeah. We have too many ideas, but we gotta. Yeah, but we'll we swing around wrap back it up, to though. it. We do gotta wrap it up. Like you gotta wrap it up with. Durex, all stupid imagine. <laughs> Always wrap it up. Always wrap nice it up. Nice segue, bro. <laughs> wrap it up. No, we're actually not sponsored by Durex, but Durex, we're your guys. We're always accepting sponsors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're sponsor whores. <laughs> we'll if take you're a any whore, sponsor if you're money. a whore, use Durex. And if you have money, sponsor our show. If you have a product, yeah, we'll, we'll put it in front of Listen, we're going to wrap it up, Trojan. 
<laughs> this, this week's wrap up is sponsored by Magnum. <laughs> yeah, by Magnum. I don't wear them, but you can. I don't know. Like we could do like a. Uh, we're gonna have to. I can't think of anything more sexual right now. I can't think of anything. <laughs> fuck like each other. Sure. Yeah, Just, like, yeah. <laughs> the fuck league. <laughs> only on our only, only fans. Our only fans. This is on the Spice Bubbles channel. <laughs> the Spicy Bubbles. 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 <laughs> Bubbles. Triple X. Oh, see. Si. Ooh. Si like it's just amor. like. <laughs> it turns into Caleb or something like. I feel like we're gonna have to censor all this because I'm. We're like just announcing hella like products that we. Yeah, hella products that I'm we. I'm sure it'll be fine. Durex won't mind. Yeah. Like, Durex is like, what the hell? Something. These guys don't get laid. <laughs> Durex is like, what? They're making our stock go down. We've ran the numbers. It's impossible. These guys are making people buy less condoms. God like, damn it! <laughs> Send the cease and desist now. Send the SWAT team. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tom Cruise, no! <laughs> Not Tom Cruise, uh, Minority Report. It's like, future crimes. You guys don't get laid. <laughs> you guys will never get laid in uh, 2023. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. The fucking, uh, what were their names? The, the Precogs? The, the, pre the Precogs have announced it. Virgins, virgin, <laughs> virgin. Okay, 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 that's enough. Pedro's right. We should wrap it up. Um, thank you for being with us today. It's been fun. Thank, thank you. you guys. Any final words? I'm going to slap you next time I see you. You know what? Bring it. All right. You son of a gun. Well, everyone, thank you for listening and watching. This has been Raul. DJ We hope to see you with us again. Come back for more. Just come back. Just come back. Like, subscribe, do all that.